mai alături unui grup de jurnaliști ce pleacă în aventura cunoașterii unui ora special, deoarece vom descoperi împreună locul unde s-au creat cele mai importante laboratoare pentru medicamente homeopatice din lume. Se știe deja, medicina în Franța are unul din cele mai apreciate și sigure sisteme de lucru, iar cei peste 25.000 de medici francezi care folosesc homeopatia vin ca o dovadă a dezvoltării acestei direcții medicale. După aterizare, ne așternem la drumul cunoașterii splendidului oraș. Lyon este un oraș sinonim cu industria mătăsii, rezistența franceză și are reputația de capitală gastronomică a lumii. Orașul se află între râurile Ron și Saon, în sud-vestul Franței. Aici se află unele dintre cele mai bune restaurante și bucătării din lume, fiind a doua zonă metropolitană ca mărime, după Paris. Ideea este că lionezii au știut să se facă cunoscuți, dacă nu vestiți. În momentul de față, infrastructura urbană este una dintre cele mai dezvoltate din Europa. Și asta se vede, vestigile fiind din abundență în tot orașul. Partea principală, unde se află cele mai importante clădiri guvernamentale și muzee, se află în peninsula Preschel, aflată între râuri. Pe terenul mai înalt din nord se află suburbia La Croix Rus. Pe malul drept al râului Saon vedeți dealul Furvier, situl orașului roman și fosta suburbie Vals. Pe malul stâng găsim altă suburbie la Ghiloterii și districtul Lebroto. Multe personalități s-au născut în Lyon sau au locuit și lucrat aici. Printre aceștia se numără doctorul François Rablet, fizicianul André-Marie Ampère, scriitorul Antoine Saint-Exupéry, Joseph-Marie Jacquard, Francis Montgolfier, care au construit primul balon cu aer cald, frații Lumière, inventatorii cinematografului și frații gemeni Henri și Jean Boiron, părinții laboratorului central homeopatic din Franța. De fapt, pentru ei ne aflăm aici, în acest oraș aristocrat, unde oamenii caută să trăiască echilibrat, în deplină armonie, trecut-prezent. Vremea este capricioasă, când plouă, când e soare. Dar am un ghid extraordinar care mă va ajuta să îmi cumpăr cea mai potrivită umbrelă și să înțeleg când și unde trebuie să merg pentru a înțelege spiritul lionez autentic. I'm very happy to start with you the tour of uh, Lyon, a very old and nice city. And because it's raining uh, for the moment, we will start from here. Uh, a nice uh, passage for shopping, for walking. Uh, what is uh, specific for the city? Well, the city is, uh, is, has got an old history because it was already founded 2,000 years ago. But we are here in this district, which is called, which is a city center, which is called the peninsula between the River Rhone and the River Saone. And characteristic for this area, this is uh, the, the place for the shopping area. We have a lot of Well, of uh, nice uh, shops here and nice brands. Huh? It is already called, also called the uh, city center, like the uh, quarter of the golden quarter, the golden area with more than 70 deluxe shops. Huh? And for example, this passageway was built already at the time of Napoleon III in the middle of the 19th century. So you have very old fashioned shops where you can find some hats, Uh, some uh, umbrellas. Well, and 
and characteristic of course for this uh, city center, the peninsula. This is the architecture with wrought iron balconies and very nice uh, facets that were built well in the middle until the end of the 19th century. <laughs> We have many houses from the 15th, the 16th and the 17th century and here we have decided that there were many Italians living in the city to use colors, well the pink colors, red colors, yellow colors, ochre colors to remind us a little bit to the Italians, bankers and traders who arrived in Lyon already in the 15th, 16th century. It was at that time a big period of prosperity, so that's why the old city, the old Lyon today is like a good example, it testified from the richness of the city at that time. We find a very nice place uh, for uh, to continue our conversation and uh, I wonder if all Lyon are full of this kind of bistros and uh, uh, raffinate restaurants. So we have in Lyon a lot of small restaurants, plenty of small restaurants which are typical small restaurants, we call them the Bouchon Lyonnais. Bouchon, the name comes from the cork of the bottle. These are typical restaurants where you eat elbow to elbow and normally you eat, uh, you drink wine from a typical bottle which is called a pot. Huh? You, drink wi you drink wine from the north of the city which is a Beaujolais wine or from the south part which is a Côte du Rhône wine. And uh, for example to eat things you, you are going to eat some uh, special sausages that we call the saucisson de Lyon, dry sausages, sausages to uh, um, to boil, it can be truffled, it can be with pistachios and also we, we eat some canel. Well, we used to say in Lyon, in the pork, everything is good. C'est lui mon homme qui ne me dit jamais Amour, je t'aime C'est lui mon homme Between the houses we have typical passageways. This also it is a Lyonnaise speciality, the traboul. The traboul, these are hidden passageway uh, coming from the verb trabouler it means to go through. So this typical passage where we have more than 450 in the city. Understood the best view of the city is from uh, Fourvier. Well, from Fourvier we can have a wonderful view over the city, over the historical parts, over the Alps. Huh? We can see the Mont Blanc sometimes, not every day, but sometimes it depends on the weather. And also we, ha we can understand how the city developed from the Roman time, it means uh, 2000 years ago, afterwards during the Middle Ages at the foot of the hill, you have a wonderful view over the old Lyon and afterwards the people, they cross the river. So they cross the River Saône and then the River Rhone and um, the, after the River Rhone, well this is the city of, the, of today from the 21st uh, century because of course the city lives on its past but also on the future. I mean, it means we, we are a big city with a lot of different industries and very important industry like the uh, medicines and uh, medical research, it's something very important in Lyon. Tout 
ce qui te plaît, qui te plaît de moi. Provocation, soumission, dis-moi tout ce que tu veux, que veux-tu de moi Pour toi je serai caméléon, c'est toi qui réveille ma curiosité. Si près de moi je n'ai que toi, c'est toi qui réveille ma sensualité. Anna, we are, uh, I think, in the most beautiful place in Lyon, dans un atelier uh, de soie. Uh, what do you know about uh, the history of the silk here in the city? Well, the history of the silk, it has started a long time ago, already in the 16th century. We had the first silk manufacturer who was open in the city. While well, this industry developed, and especially in the 18th century, the know-how of the silk weavers was renowned all over the world, especially in Europe, while well, to Russia, or to Poland, and of course in France. If you visit the castles in France, you are maybe you will have the opportunity to see the very nice silk materials covering the walls that were made in the 18th and the 19th century. Uh, I saw on the street all the women wear uh, things like this because uh, they are so beautiful more than jewels uh, sometimes and in the winter, in the spring it's an ideal uh, way to accessorize your body. Yes, it's a very nice uh, things you can wear, some shawls or a carré, uh, you know, of silk. And well, this is, uh, of course, uh, our tradition in Lyon. The women, they wear this type of uh, shawls. rencontre l'histoire de l'atelier Oui, avec plaisir. Donc là, nous sommes dans un atelier très traditionnel puisque tout ce matériel a plus de deux siècles. C'est ce que l'on appelle des métiers jacquards. Donc cette fameuse invention qui a été inventée justement par Joseph-Marie Jacquard en 1805. Alors l'atelier n'est pas très grand, mais à Lyon, il faut s'imaginer un atelier où euh, la vie familiale était... Euh, lié avec la, la vie professionnelle, c'est-à-dire les gens vivaient et travaillaient dans le même lieu. Ce qui, ce qui fait que dans, dans cette ville, euh, les ateliers étaient assez petits, mais l'articulation familiale se faisait tout autour. Donc dans cet atelier, par exemple, il y a à la fois des machines pour le tissage, bien sûr, mais parallèlement à cela, également du matériel que j'utilise pour la préparation. Donc je, je peux partir d'une matière première pour arriver à un objet terminé ou presque terminé. Et sinon, mon itinéraire pour apprendre ce métier a été naturellement euh, euh, guidé par les anciens parce que j'ai grandi dans, dans un quartier où il y avait les derniers maîtres tisseurs et déjà adolescent j'étais assez curieux de ces derniers savoir-faire donc petit je poussais à la porte des ateliers pour les rencontrer et euh, un jour un ancien m'a dit plutôt que regarder il faudrait essayer et donc c'est une l'aventure a commencé ainsi c'est une aventure qui a duré euh, 25 ans euh, et donc ensuite les années passant les anciens ont naturellement euh, pris leur retraite et comme je souhaitais continuer ce, ce métier, j'ai récupéré toutes ces machines et je suis revenu dans le quartier Saint-Georges, donc là où nous sommes, qui est quand même le point de départ du tissage puisque le tissage a commencé à se développer dans cette ville au XVIe siècle, dans ce quartier, grâce aux grands artistes italiens pour former la main d'oeuvre lyonnaise. Donc on peut presque dire que Lyon était un grand centre de tissage simplement par le biais de sa position géographique Puisqu'avant la Renaissance, les étoffes, dirons-nous précieuses, venaient soit d'Italie, soit de la route, de la soie. Mais François Ier, qui est à cette époque euh, roi de France, 
euh, bouleverse euh, ce, ce système-là. C'est-à-dire qu'il permet aux grands artistes italiens de venir, de faire fortune, mais à une condition, c'est qu'ils apprennent aux Lyonnais cet art qui est l'art du tissage de la soie.